Hey everybody, post fight, uh, Nganu versus Velasquez. Hated seeing the fight end like that. I hated seeing that. I mean, I mean, I knew. I mean, if you saw my previous video, um, I, I thought we'd know in the first minute, first round, what was going to happen, and we found out first minute, first round, what was going to happen. Uh, Kane's not Kane anymore, or Kane is always going to be fragile. Kane. I mean, um, knee went out on him. Um, there, I mean, I, I saw the replays you guys did where it wasn't really clear what punch actually did it or if Kane just slipped or, you know, he certainly got clipped. Um, just disappointed to see him land on his knee of all things and and the fight on an injury. So now, I haven't watched any of the post-fight press conferences and stuff like that about what he said about his future, but it's certainly in doubt. Um, Kane may be the all-time injury story in MMA. He may be the all-time injury story because somebody asked me, you know, if there's a comparable fighter who injuries just sidelined him and he was never great. Somebody said Dominic Cruz, but Dominic Cruz won the title, held the title for a long time. He's considered right now, in my opinion, the, the greatest bantamweight of all time. So the idea that that it's, I mean, it sidelined him obviously, but he still achieved all-time greatness. Um, I don't think Kane achieved all-time greatness. Um, I think Fatal is the greatest heavyweight of all time right now. Um, second would be Stipe. Um, Kane didn't have that run, and injuries kept him out of it. There are a lot of fighters injuries sideline. We never saw them great. Um, Javier Vasquez is one. I mean, I'm a local of Southern California. I saw him fight on the local circuit here, and everybody thought he was going to be the next big thing. And his knee went out on him um, in a fight with Alberto Crane, and he was just never the same guy after that. So it happens all the time. Usually you don't get to the level of Kane and then injury sideline. You usually you it's after that or before that. You never get there. So Kane has to be the all-time greatest example of just injuries just sidelining him to the point where he couldn't perform anymore. Um tough to see. And Ghana looked great for the 20 seconds we saw him. So uh what's next for him? A lot of people talking about a rematch with Stipe. I think that's appropriate. I think that'd be an excellent fight. See what he's learned since then. Um, always going to be a dangerous puncher, dangerous striker. He's always going to have that. Um, what else? Uh, Kron, of course, getting the takedown submission over Caceres. Kron is like a Damian Maya. He's going to be a 145-pound Damian Maya, where if he takes you down, it's over for you. He's going to have trouble against the wrestlers that can strike and stop the takedown. I mean, he's going to have the same issues as Damian Maya, where, yeah, if he takes you down, he'll get you. But if he can't take you down, you know, he didn't show anything... Great when it came to the stand up. He didn't show really super slick wrestling. It was, you know, basic wrestling and phenomenal world class jujitsu. So we've seen the ceiling on that in the UFC. And Damian Meyer is a great example. He looks phenomenal right up until he gets in there with a wrestler who can stop his takedown. And then it's just takedown defense, takedown defense, takedown defense. So Kron's going to have to show that he can get past that hump that has stopped a lot of fantastic um, jiu jitsu fighters. So, but hey, great UFC debut. It was good seeing him win. Fantastic grappler. I've been watching him for years. Um, Paul Felder fought a mature fight against James Vick. Love seeing that. Uh, he stayed tight. He stayed aggressive. He didn't give the young buck any confidence. He didn't give him that moment where he landed a big strike and was able to, to, to capitalize on that momentum. Young fighters tend to ebb and flow a little bit more than mature fighters. They need that big moment to, to like get them started and going and getting them feeling good. And Paul Felder never gave him that moment. He never let him emotionally into the fight. Never let him be the bully. Never let him be the aggressor or anything like that. So very mature fight for, for Paul Felder. Um, what's next for him? That top 10 guy. Top 10, top 5. All right, let's see if you can be a contender. Um, his best win so far, Charles Oliveira, who, excellent fighter, but um, can be up and down, can have good moments and bad moments, and, and Felder crushed him. You know, I mean, uh, Oliveira was doing well, had some grappling positions, and then, then Felder caught him with a shot, and that was it. So um, it's, it's, now it's a matter of, okay, can you make that, that title run now? Because now's the time. Now is definitely the time for him. So we'll see what he can do with that, but great watching him win. Um, all in all, an excellent card, the Vicente Luque fight. Oh, my God. That was incredible. Great stuff. I mean, back and forth. Big shots landed. Big shots taken. Uh, that's exactly the kind of fight you live for, man. You actually absolutely live for a fight. When he got sat down, he got hit and went to his butt. I was like, man, that's a shot. To make Luke go, all right, I think I need a seat. He almost like willingly like went down like, okay, I need a second here. Hold on. And then came back and won the fight. 
uh, beautiful clinch work, beautiful knees, but he found the way to win. It was like, okay, I can punch this guy for days and it's not going to work. I need something a little different. Landed the knee and, and was able to finish the fight, but great stuff by him. All in all, very good card. Excellent, excellent performances by everybody for the ESPN debut, and, and that's going to take the company far. You know, you want that, that out-of-the-park home run in the first one, and I thought it was an excellent card. And we'll see how the numbers are and how they did. Um, but fantastic stuff. Just the takeaway is... It sucks to see Kane be, you know, the, the what could have been of Kane Velasquez. What could have been if he had been able to stay healthy. But you can't have it both ways in a sense. You can't have cardio like his. You can't have um, the kind of pace he has and come out with the same body that you went in with. I heard too many stories about Kane just going super duper duper hard. And that's why he had an endless guesting. That's why he was so fun to watch. But... Where's you down? Where's you down? So you don't know what's going on behind the scenes that, that you know, the, 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 the part of the fighter that we love so much, the cardio, the athleticism, the explosiveness and all that stuff, there's a price to be paid for that if you're heavyweight. You're grinding your body down and it eventually caught up with him, it looks like. So sucks to see that. We'll see what the future holds for him. But um, the great cardio cane, I think that there was a stamp on that last night. I think that's about it. Um... The ceiling for Ngannou, we shall see about the lessons he has learned. How does he deal with the takedown? How does he deal with the things that, that caught him in the Stipe fight? His cardio, uh, his ability to conserve energy when he's not punching, things like that. If he can, if he can finish those up, definitely a heavyweight threat because he certainly has the power. But good stuff. Appreciate it. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let me know what you guys think. I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, love talking about that stuff. And also, Gilberto from uh, Jiu-Jitsu Pro Gear sent me a, a bunch of shirts. They're awesome. I got like seven of them. They're great. So anyway, Gilberto, appreciate it. Jiu-Jitsu Pro Gear, a great company. They sponsored me from the time I was doing Jiu-Jitsu stuff. Gave me free geese if I would wear their t-shirts. So awesome stuff. Appreciate you, Gilberto. Have a good one, guys.